I wouldn't even say we're necessarily that anxious about our parenting. I think we're anxious about our kids. We want them to be safe. We want them to be to have a, a path forward that we think is going to keep them, you know, happy and successful. However, we define that. And so the four reasons that I laid out in my book, which is 10 years old at this point, maybe 11, is um, first of all, there's the media, right? The media love nothing more than um, the story of a white middle or upper middle class child kidnapped by a stranger that turns out to be gold, uh, which we discovered, which the country discovered in 1979 when Eitan Pates was uh, taken from a, a bus stop. It's a horrible story. It was in New York and then Adam Walsh was killed. And um, what the media recognized when they started running these stories, and especially when they did a, a, a two-hour miniseries or a two-part miniseries on um, the Adam Walsh murder, which was, I think, from 1982 or three, uh, was that it broke all ratings records. And of course, what do you do in TV if something breaks all the records? You say, get me more of that. And since then, we've just had the, you know, the accretion of so many, sorry, like the entire Law & Order SVU um, mm. Uv, if you can call it that, uh, you know, here I am talking to an intellectual, let's say uv, but can you spell it? Never. Um, <laughs> kind of like eggs. Right. Yeah, there's just in, too in many print. vowels at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> in any event, uh, that became the the go-to story in fact and in fiction. And we, we would go anywhere to find that story. That's why we all know the Maddie McCann story, because even though it's from Portugal, it, it resonated so much because she was white, she was upper middle class, and she was taken by a stranger. So sometimes when I give lectures, I ask people um, if they can tell me anything else that's happened in Portugal in the last 500 years, and they can't. <laughs> it's just that one story, because <laughs> nothing matters to us about Europe, except that there was an example of this very rare, yep. horrific crime, and so we were willing to go there mm -hmm. to bring it back, um, because it was very precious. So um, the media is driving us crazy by finding those stories, and what I recognized actually um, in being interviewed, you know, the, the, the seminal story for me is that I let, let my nine-year-old ride the subway alone because he wanted to do that. I wrote a column about it back when there were newspapers and I had a job. And um, two days later, I was on the Today Show, MSNBC, Fox News, and NPR discussing this decision. Why had I let him do something? And the, the thing that was interesting to me about all those discussions and many of them in the, in the 10 years since was that at some point, the interviewer would say, yeah, everything's fine, but how would you have felt if he never came home? Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to, to figure out, first of all, why are they always asking? <laughs> you know, he did come home. Mm -hmm. And secondly, don't you think you have an idea of how I'd feel if he didn't come home? Take, imagine, you know, put yourself in my <laughs> shoes. So, so why were they always asking that? And I finally realized it's because um, I think it's actually two things. One is that's the that's the arc of the story. You know, if a kid is independent, if their mom takes their eyes off them, um, something bad is going to happen. And when something didn't happen, well, let's imagine if something bad had happened. That's why when there's stories at the beginning of every school year, except maybe this year to come, there will be some kid somewhere in America who's left off at the wrong bus stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he will find his way home or she will find her way home. And the local news will do a story and they will interview uh, the mother who's saying, it's just so lucky. I just can't imagine, you know, all the horrible things could have happened. And the policeman will say, you know, this was very lucky and the, 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 the bus driver will be fired. And it will all be in the service of taking a very mundane story, which is a kid gets off at the wrong bus stop and turning it into a near kidnapping murder that just was luckily didn't happen. So there's just this, this desire to shape the story to this particular narrative because that sells. Whereas a button like, you know, kid got off at the wrong bus stop. He had to walk three blocks in the wrong direction. He cried a little bit. He got home. He got a lollipop. That's nobody cares. So part of the reason that we're so crazy is that the media is always trying to find their way to that story. But the other reason that how would you feel if you never came home comes up is to teach me a lesson that I was doing wrong think, <laughs> you know, to think that your kid could be okay, which was the way that my parents were thinking and your parents were thinking if they were thinking at all, but mine were a generation ago, two generations, I guess at this point, um, was the norm then and it was condoned nobody if, if you got lost or if you got hurt people would sympathize with your mom isn't it you know she got lost at the fair you poor thing that must have driven you crazy they'd say to the mom as opposed to why weren't you watching why weren't you with her why didn't you velcro her to your wrist and mm -hmm. so 
um, the the norm of sort of believing in the world and believing in your kid and believing in the odds has been replaced by what I call worst first thinking. You're always supposed to go to that worst case scenario first if you're a good person and work your way back from like, then I feel terrible and it's all because I let her go. And so if I never let her go, then I don't have to feel that way. Nobody will blame me. I won't be on, you know, Thad's show trying to describe what a horrible thing had happened and why I wasn't, you know, uh, why I am, whatever. It's not that I'd be on Thad's show. Mm -hmm. It's that I'd be on another show or um, simply accused by the culture of, having been cavalier about my child's safety. And the only way you can be uncavalier is to sort of obsess. And the only way you can obsess is by proving that you're there, by being there. And so that became the norm. And if you broach that norm or breach that norm, whatever it is, if you throw the norm out the window, um, you're bad because if something bad happens, it's all your fault. It's not, um, it's not fate. I mean, we can get to fate later as my fifth reason now that I think that we're so crazy. But but um, the media likes to think about children in danger. They like to present children as if they're in danger. And they really love to blame parents if something bad happens, because mm -hmm. then they can look like they care. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's a mess. OK, so that's number one. Media. That's number one. Built The built in incentives within media to portray maximum harm. For children right and then you get used to seeing it and and if you say like i'm gonna let my kid wait at the bus stop it's like what what about and then people will sometimes say to me um at the beginning when i was letting izzy take the subway it's like don't you watch law and order or didn't you you know what about that kid in 1979 doesn't Aton make you scared and at one point i did the numbers and i realized like i think it was 180 million people had been born since that incident that hadn't, you know, that hadn't been taken from their bus stop in Soho. And that doesn't matter. Obviously, there's the power of the story and the media loves the story. Okay.